and we're live and streaming on a Monday morning. Welcome to your Monday morning cup of cyber. It's April 27th, uh, 2020. Uh, some of you may know that is Babe Ruth Day. Uh, the big bambino, I think. The curse of Boston. Um, all kinds of things. So, uh, Definitely a different type of baseball back then, for good and for bad, in a lot of different ways. But April 27th, regardless, is Babe Ruth Day. So, uh, you know, maybe think about Babe Ruth today. So, hopefully everyone had a good weekend and was safe and warm and dry and whatever. Um, this week, uh, we're jumping into uh, wireless Uh and we're going to start it off today with uh, web encryption and initialization uh, vectors and uh, getting into really what is is going on with, with wireless, normal 802.11 wireless. Then we'll jump into some near field and Bluetooth stuff. Uh, we'll talk about some attacks against that. Um, all, just all kinds of stuff this week. So we are moving from some of the... Uh, code-based attacks into some of the network-based attacks, the wireless attacks, and what you can do to defend yourself against this. Uh, closing in on the end of uh, Domain 1, so on Friday, and I think we're kind of looking at um, 7 p.m. East Coast time, uh, we're going to do our first of what will be many uh, trivia nights. So this is your Security Plus or Security or Cybersecurity, however you want to look at it. Cybersecurity Trivia Night. So we'll have a trivia night coming up. I think it's going to be about 7 o'clock East Coast time. I'll get it scheduled. We'll get it on the calendar. I'm going to try some new software. You'll be able to respond online. You'll be able to watch yourself uh, progress across the leaderboard. Do you have the chops to be the leader in the Cyber Recon Trivia Night, uh, first, first of hopefully many. See you out there, I hope, and we'll see who's who's got the top trivia chops, right? So today, like we talked about, we are going to jump into uh, wireless, and the first right up, right out the gate, right, right out of the gate, right out of the gate, we're going to talk about um, the web or wired equivalent uh, privacy, and we will look at uh, the IV, and the IV is really where um, a lot of the problems lie with this first type of uh, type of protection that was put in place. So we'll have our little intro, and then we'll be back, and we'll jump into it. So welcome. This is your uh, Cyber Recon Security Plus preparation course. We're going to be talking about comparing and contrasting types of attacks, domain one, uh, 1.2 types of attacks, jumping into wireless, looking at WEP, and the problems with, with IV. So uh, let's jump right into it. We'll jump to the slide deck and we'll talk about what's going on with, with WEP which was the early uh, privacy protection, early encryption, some of the problems with it, and it's still out there. So we have to be aware as security professionals, we got to be aware of this thing. So um, as we jump into this thing, uh, again, your, your leader screen there, your lead in, um, tell, tell us where we're at. We're security plus, obviously, we just talked about all that. So uh, wired equivalent privacy or WEP was one of the initial encryption protocols or programs put in place um, to, <laughs> to protect us. And symmetric is spelled uh, <laughs> way wrong there. But uh, symmetric key, use symmetric key, um, and that means everyone has the same key. And we'll see the problem with that, right? Um, initially, the encryption key length was required to be 64 bits. It was a later increase to 128 bits. Which, which was still way too small to make this thing secure as it was designed. And we'll see that. So it had a thing called an initialization vector that was added to protect the encryption key. And that was 24 bits. And the IV was actually part of 
the key size. So if you had initially, like in 1999, uh, we had a 64-bit uh, requirement. Uh, couldn't be longer than that. And, and part of that 64 bits was this IV, or this initialization vector. Um, that means your key size, your encryption key size, could only be 40 bits. And even when we increased that to 128 bits, uh, that meant your key size could be 104 bits. And we'll see even with that, it wasn't uh, quite strong enough the way this thing was designed, right? So again, symmetric key, when we looked at uh, the, the session key that everyone used to connect to the network, uh, it was a symmetric key, which means that if we look at our access point up there, uh, its name, you know, its, it's, it's web key is Tunican. That means when Alice connected, she had to use a web key of Tunican. Bob used the web key of Tunican, and Charlie used the web key of Tunican. Everybody used that same web key, and I know that's a crazy web key, but uh, just wanted to make the point. Everyone uses it. So if you had 100 users and one of them left, uh, you would have to change that session key on everyone's computer and on the access point. Um, so obviously that made, made it pro a problem, and the fact that everyone used the same key meant that it was was a little bit more vulnerable as that key transitioned the network because everyone used the same one. Um, so let's look at a little bit how this process works when we're using this IV, what the IV actually does for us, right? So we're going to say Alice is going to send some traffic across the network, right? So she starts out and she's got a data packet, which is, is shown at the top there, and a CRC or a cyclic uh, redundancy check and that just makes sure that the data is correct right so it's a, it's a mathematical function on the data to give it a value so that we can check on the other end to make sure that the data is correct um, so that's packaged together that's made into one group the data and the CRC um, and then on the other side on the on the the, the wireless protocol side on the, on the kind of the web side um, we have our web key, which we know in this case is Tunican, and then we have an initialization vector, and that's going to provide some, what, what they call uh, equivalent to salting, right? So it's going to add some value to the key so it doesn't look the same every time that it goes across the network. So um, the IV and the web key are, are kind of put together, and they're, they're kind of munged, <laughs> and there's a, it's not very a technical term, but... Um, the IV allows the web key to be uh, changed a bit or salted. So those kind of are put together. And then they're run through the actual encryption logarithm. And this one, in this case, it's RC4. And that results in a key stream. Um, so our key stream is, is that data encrypted. So we've, or the, the uh, web key and the initialization vector has been encrypted with this, this process RC4. Um, now we have two kind of sides of this. We're going to put them together in a process called XORing, and that's going to um, combine the data and then the keystream, um, and it's going to result in an encrypted uh, transmission going across the wireless network. So um, we have ciphertext getting ready to go across the wireless network. And now one of the big problems with this is that we had to also send the initialization vector with the ciphertext because that's going to be a value that changes and at the receiving end they're going to need that to be able to decrypt or go back through this process backwards. So we have to append the IV in plain text to the ciphertext that's going across the network. So that's one of our first problems. Now we've got the initialization vector in plain text with our ciphertext going across uh, the network. And there it goes off shooting off across the network. So when we look at the, the IV, um, it's 24 bits long. Uh, there can be a little over 16 <laughs> there can be a little over 16 million different possibilities, right? 16 million seven hundred seventy seven thousand two hundred sixteen different IV possibilities. Um, if we go through that number, then of course that will be the largest number that will ever happen before an IV is repeated. Um, some of these IV values are actually weaker than other IV values. And we can use ma a math process um, to reverse this and determine the encryption key. Um, 
So all we need is to push a large volume of data across the wireless network and then we can figure out these IVs and we can figure out the encryption key, especially if we can get IV values to repeat. And if they're the weak IV values, then we'll more easily be able to break the encryption key, break the web key and figure out what the actual encryption key is, right? And we can use automated tools to make this relatively quick. So we can make this a lot faster using some automated tools all right, uh, to do this. And we'll see that with something like um, disassociation attacks and replay attacks, things like that that will drive traffic up across the network. And that's what the, the, the bad guy, the, the attacker, is going to try to do. They're going to try to send a large volume of data across the network. Um, each time packets go across the network, they're going to have a different IV. Um, and, and really, as soon as we get to 15 or 20,000 um, different packets with different IVs, that's normally the, the range we need to be in to start getting uh, repeated IV values. And if we can repeat those weak ones, even better. And, and remember, this isn't done manually. A lot of times this is done, I think almost exclusively, this is done with tools that will help you do this. So you can push a lot of data across the network, um, and then you can use that data to break the web key. That's why most new switch, uh, most new access points will not even allow you to use web because it's so uh, relatively insecure. So when we're talking about this, when, when you're thinking about what you need to know uh, for the exam, uh, WEP is wired equivalent privacy. Uh, WEP uses metric keys. Um, the WEP key is either going to be 64 or 128 bits long. Uh, the IV is part of that bit length. Uh, the IV is the initialization vector. Um, the IV is 28 bits long. Um, possible numbers of IV values is 16.7 million, you know, from that. Uh, and the IV is attached to the ciphertext in plain text, making it fairly, um, a fairly weak protocol. So know these things, good to know this, and we're going to, we're going to talk about uh, wireless obviously more, um, but this is the, this is dipping your toe into it, understand WEP understand the initialization vector, the IV, understand why they can be a problem. Um, you know, this, this is a technology that's still used today. Um, there, there are people out there still using uh, maybe older access points that have WEP or access points that still have WEP built into them. So um, if you can avoid it, don't use WEP. Use some of the more modern uh, processes, and we'll talk about those. So... As always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Uh, please like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when new content is coming out. And I'd love to see your comments below. Uh, and we will see you next time. Be safe out there. <laughs>